So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today's session on Google Analytics for Acceleration Program. My name is Kogul Raghavan, and together with me to get, uh, today is Shamin Yo. So I see that some of you joining today were part of the first session of our webinar series on the 4th of September. So now, as a reminder, the GA4 Accelerator Program is designed uh, to empower these publishers in the C region, and this five-part webinar series will continue until the end of October. Um, our one on one office hours have also commenced, so feel free to scan the QR code for any additional support that you might need. All right, so in today's session, we are going to dive deeper into GA4 by focusing on custom report printing. We'll provide a step by step guide on how to create and interpret custom reports tailored to publishers' needs. So before we jump into today's webinar, let's quickly cover a few housekeeping items to make sure we have a smooth session and a productive session. So first off, I encourage you to have uh, your GA4 open and ready as we'll be doing a live demo towards the end of the webinar. Um, also, please don't hesitate to ask any questions. Uh, feel free to type them in the chat box throughout the session and we'll take some time at the end to address them all. Um, also, another thing, uh, keep in mind that Shamin, my co-host, uh, will be jumping in at random and will be conducting quick pop quiz in between our webinar. So yeah, just be prepared to answer those via polls. Um, and lastly, this session is being recorded as well, so uh, you can revisit anything you may have missed. Uh, the recording, along with all the materials presented today, will be available on the program website after the webinar. So no need to worry about anything. You'll have everything at your fingertips. All right, so let's start it off with the quote of the day. Business reporting is not dealing with objects. It's dealing with relationship between objects. At first glance, it sounds simple. But when, it, when we break it down, it reveals something much deeper, especially when we think about it in the context of analytics. So in analytics, the power doesn't just lie in the raw data itself. It is in the relationships between that data, how they move from one page to another, how they engage with different elements, and how all these behaviors are connected. And that's exactly where GA4 steps in. It helps us uncover those critical connections, whether we are analyzing content effectiveness, tracking marketing performance, or understanding the overall user experience. So in today's session, I'll walk you through how GA4 empowers us to create different types of report, each designed to reveal these key relationships. So you can take actionable insights and make informed decisions that drive your business forward. All right, so in GA4, we have three core types of report that are essential for understanding and optimizing user behavior on your side. Each of these reports offer unique ways to help you understand optimize and elevate your content's performance. So let's dive into them. First up, standard reports. Think of this as your bird side view, designed to give you an overview of how users are interacting with your site. For you as a publisher, this means seeing where your readers are coming from, whether it's social media, search engines, or direct traffic. Standard reports provide a high-level snapshot of traffic engagement and page performance to help you see the bigger picture. So next up, we have customized reports, and this is where things get really exciting. This report allows you to tailor insights to your exact needs. Want to know which content category, like news opinion pieces or features, sparks the most engagement? Customized reports makes that easy. You can create summary cards that put the most important metrics, such as average engagement or author performance, right at your fingertips. And this is all in one place. No more digging through tabs. It's all tailored to your business goals. And finally, we have exploration reports. This is where GFO's true power lies. These advanced reports let you dig deeper into your user's behavior, providing insights you can, uh, which you can't get from standard reports. For example, you can uncover how readers engage with your articles over time, or even track which types of content lead to conversions. You can take it a step further by adding custom dimensions like publication date or author, giving you a full detailed picture of content performance. So today we are going to focus on how to leverage both customized reports and exploration reports to gain valuable insights that are key for optimizing your content strategy, driving engagement, and boosting subscriptions. Right, so before we look in depth of the two mentioned reports, uh, let's take a quick look into standard reports. Standard reports in GA4 provides uh, you, the publishers, with essential built-in tools to track and analyze reader interactions, giving a clear overview of how your content is performing. These reports offer valuable insights into key metrics, such as how users are engaging with your site as a whole. From traffic, uh, tracking traffic sources to understanding reader demographics, standard reports helps you to uncover important details about your audience behavior. 
including user retention and overall site engagement. However, as a publisher, it is important to be aware of two potential limitations when using GA4 reports. Uh, these two are data sampling and thresholding. So data sampling occurs when your report involves a large volume of data, such as a high number of sessions or users. So instead of processing all your data, GA4 may use a sample to generate reports faster. While this speeds up report generation, it may not reflect the full scope of your audience behavior. The second uh, limitation, as mentioned, is thresholding data. Uh, GA4 applies this to protect user privacy, especially in smaller audience segments. This can result in some data being hidden or aggregated, which may limit your ability to see the full details of user interaction on more specific or niche contents. So this limitation may impact the insight you gather. So understanding when sampling and thresholding occur is crucial for interpreting your reports accurately. So while these reports provide a strong foundation of insights, the customization options are very limited. For more tailored analysis, you may want to explore custom reports or advanced explorations in GA4 to better meet specific business goals. All right, let's dive into customized reports. So while GA4 offers a solid set of standard reports right out of the box, the real magic when, uh, happens when you start tailoring these reports to fit your specific needs as a publisher. So think it uh, of this way. No two publishers are the same. Right, and the metrics or insights that mo uh, matter most to you might look very different depending on your goals. So this is where customization comes into play. Whether you're tracking engagement on long-form investigative pieces versus quick news updates, or you're trying to understand how traffic sources like social media and direct visits drive subscriptions, GA4 gives you the fle uh, flexibility to focus on exactly what you need. So first up, you can create reports that align perfectly with your business goals by selecting specific dimension and metric that truly matters to you. For publishers, this is essential uh, when analyzing read engagement patterns, monitoring subscription growth, or identifying ad revenue opportunities across different content types. Let's say, for example, you want to see how readers from different regions engage with various sections of your site, like opinion columns or news analysis pieces. You can customize the report to track those specific behaviors, giving you a clear view of how different content types are performing across key reader segments. Now, here's where it gets even more interesting. Filter and comparisons. These are critical tools for narrowing down your data and getting those granular insights. Imagine you're focusing on your top 10 articles. You can use filters to zoom in on how mobile users are interacting with those pieces versus desktop users. Or maybe you want to compare how new uh, users engage with your content compared to returning visitors. Filter and comparison give you the detailed insight you need to fine tune your strategy. But it doesn't stop there. You can also use audience specific insights to take things even further. Like are certain content types driving more loyalty? Like for instance, maybe opinion pieces are leading to more newsletter signups while breaking news stories are driving more one-time visits. Customizing reports help you to move beyond surface level metrics and dive into real audience behavior, empowering you to make data-driven decisions that can boost both engagement and retention. So to sum it up, customizing reports in GA4 is about so much more than just monitoring your site. It's about understanding why things are happening, and more importantly, how you can use those insights to improve read engagement and drive stronger business outcomes. Right, uh, now here's the two main ways you can create custom reports in GA4. First, we have the option to customize existing built-in report. GA4 comes preloaded with a set of foundational reports that offer an overview of key metrics like acquisition, engagement, monetization, and retention. So these built-in reports are incredibly useful for getting a quick snapshot of how your site is performing. For instance, if you're tracking how users are arriving at your site, whether through social media, search engines, or direct traffic, these reports can quickly surface that information for you. But here's the thing, while these reports are a great starting point, they might not always capture the specific insight you need to run a successful publishing business. Maybe you want to dig deeper into how long-form article versus short-form updates are driving subscriptions. Or perhaps they're curious about how returning readers behave compared to like first-time visitors. That's when customizing these built-in reports becomes crucial, allowing you to refine them so they are more relevant to your goals. Now, the second option offers you complete creative freedom, and that's building a new report from scratch in GA4 library. This is where you can really let your creativity shine. Unlike modifying existing reports, starting from scratch allows you to tailor the report exactly to your needs as a publisher. 
The library offers you the flexibility to focus on metrics and dimensions that matters to you uh, the most, whether it's tracking reader loyalty over time, monitoring subscription growth, finalizing ad performance across different audience segments. So example, let's say you want to create a report that specifically tracks how you, uh, mobile users are interacting with your articles compared to desktop users. With this approach, you can build a custom report that focuses in on exactly those insights. The beauty of the library is that it allows you to go far beyond the preset reports, empowering you to focus on the metrics that will help you make data-driven decisions and optimize your publishing strategies. So to sum it up, customizing built-in reports is ideal when you need to fine-tune an existing framework to fit your needs, while creating a new report in the library gives you the freedom to build something entirely new and laser focus on your specific business goal. All right, let's walk through the steps of customizing built-in reports in GA4. So first up, to edit any report, all you need to do uh, is click the edit button at top right. This will open up your customization op uh, options. So uh, if you're a publisher, this step is crucial when you want to make slight adjustments to better align the report with your editorial goals. So uh, please do ensure that you have sufficient permissions, uh, like uh, admin, uh, administrative permission or editor permission to edit the reports in GA4. Uh, because if you don't, uh, you might not be able to see this uh, uh, you, you might not see this button on your end. So yeah, second up, updating the report is where the fun happens, right? So here's uh, where you can add cards that are available for selected reports. So these cards can show various metrics and dimensions, uh, things like average engagement time, page view, or geographic breakdowns. So for instance, if you are interested in seeing which articles are performing well across different device type, whether it's mobile, desktop, or tablet, you can add the relevant card and get the clear breakdown of the data. So once you've made your adjustment, the next step is to save changes. Now, you can either update the current report or save it as a new one. This allows you to create multiple versions of report that focus on different aspects of your content strategy. So by customizing your built-in report in this way, you're not just gathering data, you're unlocking insights that can directly influence your editorial and business strategy. Whether it's boosting engagement or identifying top performing articles, this approach ensures you are always in tune with your reader behavior. Now, let's dive in into how adding cards to built-in reports in GA4 can help you and get a more tailored view of the site performance. So when working with uh, built-in reports, each section offers different type of cards. These cards display key metrics like accusation trends or real-time active users. Think of them as building blocks that shape your report based on your focus. For example, a news publisher might add a real-time page view card to monitor the performance of articles. This gives your editorial team insights into which pieces are driving traffic and which may need adjustment. So by adding the right cards, you can turn your built-in report into dynamic dashboard and provide real-time insight into performance and opportunities for improvement. So whether tracking comments or analyzing engagement, these cards make it easy to see what's working and where to fine tune. All right, let's move on to creating a completely new report in GA4 library. Now, while customizing existing report is helpful, there are times when you need to uh, need something truly specific to your business needs, and that's where library shines. It gives you a total flexibility to build a report from scratch, so you can focus on the data that really matters to you. So to get started, you'll want to head over to the library section in GA4. This is like your personal workspace where all your reports live, and it's where you'll start crafting new ones tailored to your goals. Next, uh, which is for the point two, you'll select the type of report that you want to create. So over here, you've got two options. Uh, an overview report, which gives you uh, that high-level snapshot, or a detailed report for diving deep into specific metrics. So think about it uh, this way. Uh, so think about your objectives first. So if you want to quick uh, overview of engagement, an overview report might be perfect here. But if you are investigating subscription drivers or reader loyalty, a more detailed report will give you the insight you need. So for the third step here, you can either use a blank canvas to create a report from ground up, adding only the dimensions, metrics, and filters that suits your needs, or save yourself some time and start with one GFOS pre-built templates, especially handy if you want to track how different type of content impact ad revenue or subscription. So once again, a quick thing to note here, you'll need edit permission to access the library. So if you don't see it, make sure you have the right access to unlock these features. All right, continuing from where we left off. Now for point four, it's time to add some real substance to your report. This is where you'll select the dimensions, metrics, and filter that matters most to your publishing goal. 
For instance, you might want to focus on average time on page or compare new versus returning users. Broken down by dimensions like uh, article type or author. This granular detail helps you to identify what drives engagement and how various types of contents are performing. Lastly, once you're happy with your selection and customization, it's time to save your report. You can either save it as a new report, adding it to your library for future use, or simply update an existing report if you're refining an earlier version. So saving your report means you'll always have easy access to these tailored insights, whether you need them for strategy meetings, editorial decisions, or ongoing performance tracking. And that's how you can leverage the full power of GFO's custom reporting capabilities by meticulously selecting the right data points and saving your uniquely tailored reports. You not only keep your finger on the pulse of your publication performance, but also empower your decision making with precision data. It's all about turning raw data into actionable insights that drive your publishing agenda forward. All right, so it's time for a quick pop quiz. So over to you, Shamin. All right, thank you, Kogo, for sharing with us um, the different type of reports. So now we're at our first pop quiz. So now the question would be, what is the key benefits of using ga 4 custom reports for publisher? So I'm going to launch a poll. So you feel free to select what you think is the right answer to this question. Is it A, the ability to measure content performance more accurately? B, the tra uh, tracking real-time traffic only? C, there's no need for data customization? Or D, comparing social media performance only? So I see that there's some um, votes, uh, people who selected uh, option A. Most people selecting option A. Let's give it a few more seconds. Thank you, Anya. Thank you, Brahma. I think you can uh, go ahead to select the answer in the poll instead of um, typing it in the chat box. But great, everybody is um, selecting option A. So I'll go ahead to end the poll. So yes, the answer is A, the ability to measure content performance more accurately is the key benefit of using the GA4 custom report. So the tracking of real-time traffic, you can use your um, the built-in report under, um, there's a real-time section for that. So you'll be able to see all your real-time traffic. Um, there's always a need for data customization for you to better understand how your users are behaving and interacting on your site. And it also bring, gives you more uh, information of what they are doing on your website. And uh, for the social media uh, performance, uh, comparison performance, you can do so in the um, acquisition tab under um, social media, sorry, under paid social or organic social. So all of this can be used under your built-in reports instead of the custom reports. All right, I hope the explanation is clear. Now I'll pass it back to Kogo. All right, thank you, Sharman. Now, let's shift gears and dive into the true power of GA4 exploration reports. For publishers like you, creating tailored reports that go beyond surface level metrics is crucial to understand your audience behavior and content performance. So with exploration reports, you gain the flexibility to focus on the key metrics that align directly with your business goals, whether it's analyzing how reader engage with specific articles, assessing paywall effectiveness, or examining how different user segments interact with your site. This tool lets you dig deeper. So for instance, you can explore how long readers spend on long-form investigative pieces versus quick news updates, or track which traffic sources like organic search or social media are driving the most engagement. This level of customization is invaluable because it allows you to adjust metrics and dimensions to fit your exact needs. All right, so what makes exploration reports even more powerful is the ability to generate actionable insights. For example, if you notice a significant drop-off midway through a high-performing article, that might be an opportunity to restructure the content or add more interactive elements to keep readers engaged. So ultimately, these reports allows you to make informed data-driven decisions they're not just seeing what's happening, they're uncovering why it's happening. Uh, and that's a uh, kind of insight, which is essential for shaping your content strategy, increasing reader loyalty, and optimizing revenue streams. Right. Let's break down the essential of exploration reports and how they work. These reports 
let you dive deep into your data by using three core elements, segments, dimensions, and metrics. These three are the key to extracting valuable insights. So let's start with segments. These are subsets of your audience based on shared behaviors or characteristics. For example, you might create a segment of users who have read more than five articles in a week or those who have arrived from social media. Understanding how different segments behave allows you to tailor content and strategies to your most valuable reader, whether they're loyal subscribers or casual visitors. Next, we have dimensions. Dimensions are attributes of your data. Think of them as categories for analysis. In publishing, useful uh, dimensions could be device category, which tells you whether readers are using mobile, desktop, or tablet. Another key dimension in, is probably geography, which helps you understand where your audience is coming from. This insight allows you to focus on specific region and fine tune your content strategy accordingly. Finally, let's talk about metrics. These are the number that quantify your data. For publishers, critical metrics might include average engagement time, which shows how long, uh, how long user stays on your articles, or scroll depth, measuring how far down a reader goes. Monitoring these metrics provides key insights into content engagement, revealing what's working and what might need adjustment. So in short, by leveraging segments, dimensions, and metrics, you can craft customized reports that give a clear and detailed view of your audience behavior. This empowers you to make data-driven decisions, uh, enhance engagement, and ultimately boost conversions. Right, let's dive into how you can actually create uh, and customize these reports. Exploration report in GA4, uh, as mentioned, offers a lot of flexibility, especially for you who wants to track specific metrics and dimension in a way that standard reports don't allow. So step one, uh, you need to select a visualization. For example, let's say we want to look at our data using a bar chart. This is useful for quickly comparing different segments like mobile versus desktop traffic or engagement rates across various regions. The key here is to choose a visualization that aligns with the insights you're looking for. Whether you want a line chart to show trends over time or a bar chart for quick comparisons, GA4 gives you those options. So step two is to drag the variables to the tab settings. This is where things get interesting. You can drag dimensions and metrics into specific areas to define what you want to analyze. So for publishers, a great example might be dragging the country dimensions to the row and actually fuses to the values. This allows you to see how different regions are engaging with your content. You can also add more granular details like gender and device uh, category to further break down the data as well. Step three here is to add filters, which is optional. Filters allows you to zoom in on specific data subsets. Say, you only want to view data from users who want to spend or a user who spent over two minutes on your article. You can set up filters to refine your reports even further. By following this step, you'll create a tailored exploration report that gives a deep dive into your audience behavior, enabling you to make data driven decision and optimize content effectively. This flexibility in GA4 is key for publishers who want to understand not just who the audience is, but how they are interacting with your contents. So as mentioned, the default reports in Google Analytics help you monitor your key business metrics, but exploration provides deeper insight with advanced techniques to answer more complex questions. So here are the type of techniques. We have funnel exploration, path exploration, preform exploration, cohort exploration, segment overlap, user exploration, and user lifetime. Each technique is designed to address specific business needs from tracking content engagement to understanding user retention over time. So in the upcoming slide, we'll dive into how you can leverage each of this feature to enhance your audience insight and optimize your content strategy. Right, let's talk about freeform reports, a key exploration technique within GA4 that offers incredible flexibility. Whether you're tracking article views, subscription signups, or digging into how users interact with different types of content, freeform allows uh, for deep customization tailored to your unique needs. You can mix and match metrics like article views or subscription completion, enabling you to explore different user behavior across uh, various dimensions. So for example, maybe you want to see which articles are driving the most engagement or which piece are encouraging readers to subscribe. So what's really powerful here is the ability to track user engagement across content types. So for instance, you might want to know how your investi uh, investigative journalism performs compared to short uh, news updates instead. So with freeform reports, you can build a report that shows how these different formats are resonating with your audience. 
so you can make informed decisions about where to focus your editorial efforts. And finally, you can tailor these reports based on your editorial advertising or audience strategy. Maybe your goal is to increase newsletter signups or boost traffic to your sponsored articles. Freeform allows you to see exactly how different strategies are performing and adjust accordingly. So Freeform really gives you the freedom to analyze data in a way that's most meaningful to your specific goals. It's your blank canvas to build the insight that matters more to you. Funnel exploration on the other end is uh, absolutely essential for uh, those who want to boost their conversion rates, whether it's uh, for subscription, sign up, or paid content. So imagine being able to visualize the exact step your readers take as they move towards completing a goal. Every action counts from viewing an article to creating an account to ultimately subscribing. This exploration tool allows you to see all those steps in one clear path. Now, what's powerful about funnel, expo uh, funnel exploration is that how it helps you to identify where people are dropping off. Maybe they are reading your content, but abandoning uh, the process before signing up for a newsletter or subscription. With this data, you can spot the specific stage that things are falling through and make adjustments to optimize that particular part of the funnel. So for instance, you might notice that readers stop engaging right after discovering an article. With that insight, you can experiment with improving the subscription flow tweaking the design or perhaps enhancing the messaging around paid content to capture more attention at that critical moment. So the, the beauty of funnel exploration lies in its ability to give you actionable data, helping you not just understand user behavior, but actively refine your strategy to maximize con uh, conversions. Whether uh, it's optimizing uh, paywalls or enhancing the journey from content discovery to subscription, this tool uh, empowers you to make informed decisions that leads to tangible results. Now, let's move on to Segment Overlap, an essential tool for publishers looking to get deeper insight into how different user groups engage with their content. So Segment Overlap uh, report lets you to visualize how various audience segments intersect, which can be like a game changer for understanding shared behaviors across reader types. So for example, if you want to compare how your uh, loyal reader behave versus more casual visitors, Segment Overlap will help you identify those uh, overlaps. So maybe loyal readers are more likely to engage with long-form investigative pieces, while casual visitors tend to only skim breaking news. But it doesn't stop there. You can also dive into shared interest between subscriber groups. Say you've got a group of uh, subscribers that only uh, uh, views business news, and another that's more engaged with lifestyle content. Understanding where their behavior overlap can help you tailor both uh, content and marketing efforts more effectively. Lastly, this also helps for boosting retentions. By targeting cross-segment behaviors, you can fine-tune your strategies, whether it's pushing premium content to free users who already engage frequently, or building loyalty programs for subscribers who engage less frequently, but with higher value content. So in short, segment overlap helps you to take more nuanced approach to audience segmentation, allowing you to connect the dots between different type of readers and make informed de uh, decisions to drive engagement and retention. Right, next, let's dive into path exploration, which is an uh, incredibly insightful tool for understanding how your readers navigate through your site. Path exploration helps you visualize the exact sequence of action that user takes, giving you a clearer picture of how content is consumed and where there might be opportunities for op optimization. Right, for example, uh, let's say a reader starts by clicking on a breaking news articles. Where do they go next? Do they uh, dive deeper into related news or perhaps shift their attention to a more in-depth analysis? Path exploration lets you to trace that journey step by step. So for publishers, this is invaluable. You can visualize user journey, not just from one article to another, but also how they engage with key touch points, whether that's clicking through videos, newsletter, or other interactive elements on your page. This tool also helps you identify popular reading paths as well. Knowing where your readers spend the, time, uh, spend the most time, it allows you to strategically optimize content placement, maybe featuring a related article or promoting a newsletter sign up after a key piece. And finally, path exploration helps you improve the overall user flow and interaction with your most critical content. By reducing friction and guiding users through a more engaging reading journey, you'll not only enhance the reader experience, but also boost the likelihood of conversions, whether it's subscription, signups, or even ad clicks. In summary, path exploration provides a 
roadmap to better understand how users engage with their content and allows you to refine site structure for imp uh, improved content discovery. Right, now let's shift our focus to user lifetime reports. This is an essential tool for publishers looking to understand the long-term value and behavior of their readers from their very first interaction all the way through the entire life cycle on your site. So for publishers, it's not about getting one-time clicks. What we want to uncover here is uh, the deeper engagement. How often are readers returning? How long they are sticking around? And more importantly, like how valuable they become over time. With user lifetime analysis, we can measure key metrics like user retention and revenue uh, generated. But what's really valuable here is it allows us to access, uh, access engagement from the very first visit all the way to the most recent interaction. This kind of insight helps you not only gauge how loyal your audience are, but also see which type of content or strategies are bringing them back for more. So understanding these patterns is crucial for optimizing content and improving retention strategies. You can measure the lifetime value of loyal readers and subscribers, pinpoint, pinpoint um, content preference over time, and of course, track long-term retention and reader loyalty. So in a sense, this report helps you to see the bigger picture. It's not just about individual sessions or interactions, but about cultivating a deeper connection with your readers. So you can fine tune your content strategy to keep them coming back. Right, let's dive into cohort explorations now. This feature allows you to group users based on chat interactions, helping you to track how specific group, such as first time readers or those engaging with a particular series or topic behave over time. For instance, let's say you have just launched an editorial series on investigative journalism or a long-term coverage uh, of a major event. Cohort exploration allows you to group readers who interact with this specific content and track how they engage with your site in the future. What's really useful for pub uh, publishers is that uh, this feature helps you analyze retention, engagement, and conversion patterns for specific cohorts over time. You can group readers based on uh, when they first visited, or engage with a particular content. And from there, you can see how likely they are to return, subscribe, or convert based on the initial, uh, in initial interaction. So imagine being able to track how readers who visit your site for a specific editorial campaign are engaging over time. Are they subscribing after reading your long form articles? Are they uh, returning to follow up on a particular series? So by analyzing these cohorts, you can make data-driven decisions to optimize your editorial strategies. So in short, Cohort exploration helps you understand how groups of readers evolve and behave over time, allowing you to refine your content strategies to boost retention and engagement while ensuring that your key topic continue to resonate with your audience as well. Right, time for the next piece. Uh, so yeah, over to you, Shamin. All right, thank you, Kogo, for sharing with us the seven different techniques that is available in the exploration report. So now we are in the second quiz. So the question would be, what is the main goal of conducting cohort analysis in GA4? Similar format, I'll be launching the poll. So you can select the, the answer that you think is, is the right one for this question. So is it A, um, for tracking of ad revenue? B, analyzing how a group of users behave over time. C, measuring website speed. And last but not least, D, comparing social media uh, performance. So if you recall, this is the one of the last techniques that Google had, was sharing. So think about, um, thank you, Brahma. Okay, yeah. So thank you for the egg response. So maybe you, it would be good if you can select the poll, the answer in the poll instead. Right, just giving it a couple more seconds. Couple more seconds. All right. We'll be closing the poll now. So yes, everyone got the right answer is B, is to uh, analyze how a group of users have behaved over time. So it's not for tracking of ad revenue, not tracking for measurement of uh, website speed, neither is it used to compare the social media platform, uh, social media performance. So maybe I can jump one slide before because this is the most recent um, technique that Google has shared. So if you can see in the first, 
Thank you, Melvin. Yeah, so if you can see in the in the um, screenshot, you can see that this, the users are actually divided or segmented into the different time period that they have entered the website. So basically what this report is trying to show you is whether or not your users who came in in um for example the 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 earliest period that you have sh you have selected are they coming back to your website over time so this website will i mean this report will definitely help you analyze the way your user behave over time so yeah that's i hope the explanation is clear i'll hand it back to kogo all righty. Thank you, Sherman. Right. So let's move on to the next section. So in this section, we'll quickly dive into interpreting conversion data and how it plays a crucial role in driving business outcomes. So this also serves uh, as a bit of recap as we'll use insights from the techniques we have covered earlier as well. So yeah, moving on. As publishers, it's crucial to understand the entire journey the reader takes from their First interaction with uh, with an article to when they finally convert, whether that's through subscribing uh, to premium content, signing up for a newsletter, or engaging with ads. By using GA4 to map out these interactions, we can see which content types or traffic sources are most effective in driving conversions. So understanding this behavior pattern allows you to optimize your content strategy. If in-depth articles lead to conversions, perhaps you should allocate more resources to producing that type of content. So ultimately, mapping reader journey isn't just about understanding where they have been. It's about knowing how to guide them towards a meaningful action, making every content that's fun purposeful and geared towards, max, uh, geared towards maximize uh, impact. So building on what we discussed uh, with funnel exploration earlier, identifying drop-off points uh, is very crucial for publishers looking to fine-tune their user experience. So in GA4, these drop-off points can reveal uh, where users lose interest whether uh, that's on a paywall, after consuming content, or even before completing a registration. What, uh, what's most valuable here is uh, not just knowing that drop-off happens, but why they happen. This allows you to address specific pain points. For example, do your users reach the subscription page but hesitate to fill out the form? Or do they drop off after reading articles without taking the next step? So by pinpointing these exact moments, you can implement solutions that directly combat friction maybe simplifying subscription forms, optimizing CTAs, or offering tailored incentives, uh, which will nudge readers towards completing the actions. So ultimately, tracking, uh, tackling this frictions point not only enhances the user journey, but also drives higher conversion rates and long-term uh, reader loyalty. Now that you have gathered valuable insights from your conversion data, it's time to take action. Refining your content strategy based on what resonates most with your readers. As publishers, this means focusing on types of content that truly drives meaningful action, whether it's increasing paid subscription or enhancing ad impressions. Let's say you find a video content consistently driving more subscription or that your readers engage more with in-depth reporting and opinion pieces. You can use this data to prioritize those content types, amplifying what's working and adapting to your strategy accordingly. So remember, iteration is the key here. The digital landscape and reader behavior are always evolving. Regularly revisiting your GA4 insights will allow you to keep pace with these changes, ensuring you uh, that your site continues to meet both your reader needs and your business goals as well. All right, time for the next uh, pop quiz. Over to you, Shami. All right, thank you, Kogo. So now we're on to the next quiz. So I'm going to launch the poll again, like what I was sharing. You can you can select the answers by going to the activities and selecting polls, and you'll be able to uh, see the poll and make the and make the selection. So for this quiz, um, the question will be which engagement metric will be most helpful in determining determining how deeply a reader interacts with a long form article. So is it A engagement rate, B pages per session, C scroll depth, or D? sessions so um i see that there's a, a variety of answers being selected so um, a bit of hint is that um the emphasis is on long form articles so there's difference right because like sometimes we have uh articles that we have more content 
in. So we just want to, what, what metric is good or is a good indicator to kind of help you determine whether or not your users are being engaged with your content throughout the whole article. So maybe you think about that and before you make the answer. Yeah, so I'm giving everyone uh, a few more seconds. Any more answers? Oh, I see some people changing their answers. <laughs> right. So, okay, I'm going to proceed to close the, to end the poll in a few seconds. Right, I'll be ending the poll now. Okay, so you can see there's a high number of people, I mean, a variety of uh, answers selected. So most of you guys selected C, which is GrowDev, which is the correct answer. Um, because like what I emphasized earlier, it's a long form article. So with the help of the scroll depth uh, and get, uh, metric, you'll be able to, you'll be able to see and determining, uh, determine whether or not your users are reading your article, um, the whole content of your article, because once you reach a certain scroll that, and which is the end of the article, then it actually uh, signifies that your users have read your content throughout. So why engagement rate is not a good metric to understand how deeply your readers are interacting with your long form content is because engagement rate um, I believe this was gone through the previous webinar. If not, I'll put it explain again. So engagement rate is determined, um, or the formula is uh, the number of engaged sessions over the total number of sessions. So now you'll be asking, oh, what? how do you define what an engaged session is? So an engaged session is when your, your users have two or more uh, page views, was on the site for more than 10 seconds, or have triggered a uh, key event. So this will this either of the uh, criteria, if either of the criteria is met, the um, J4 will segment it or rather it will it will define it as an engaged session and then that's how they calculate the engagement rate. So with the definition that I've just shared, it is again not a good indicator of whether or not your users are being engaged throughout your whole long form article because it's just showing you what or telling you whether or not your users are being engaged on your website. So for pages per session, so this similarly, it just tells you the number of pages that your users are clicking in one session. It doesn't really tell you whether or not um, your users are reading through your whole um, article, especially those longer article pieces. And sessions um, pretty clear why that it isn't a good metric because it just shows you the number of sessions. Uh, it's not really an engagement metric to toggle with. All right, I'm glad that most of you guys got the right answer. This is a tricky question, so props to you guys. Now we'll move on to the next question. I'll be launching the poll as well. So similarly, you can select your answers that you think the answer that you think is right for this quiz. So the question is, which of the following strategy uh, is the most effective uh, is the most effective of converting uh, for converting non-paying readers into paying subscribers? So is it A? increasing the frequency of emails new email newsletter b offering exclusive content to subscribers c reducing the number of free articles available or d displaying more ads on the website so i see many of you guys have selected option b keep the votes coming in yeah, I'll give it a few more seconds. All right, someone selected increasing the frequency of email newsletter. All right. All right, I'll be closing the poll right now. Okay, great. So most of you guys have selected the right 
strategy, which is to offer exclusive content to your subscribers. So um, if the content that you are um, putting as subscriber only are engaging enough and is something that people will want to read, they will be more likely to turn into subscribers um, from uh, like casual readers. So why is A not the answer? So if you increase the frequency of the email newsletter, um, it could uh, be a nuisance to your your subscribers. So the fact that they have subscribed, uh, subscribed to your newsletter is already pretty good, but spamming them or increasing the frequency of your emails would not actually give them a very good user experience. So they might even unsubscribe from your newsletter. So um, we'll try to avoid to do that. Um, reducing the number of free articles available um, is not really recommended because if you were to do that, then you won't have enough content generated for the general traffic uh, to go to your website. And it's hard for them to you know, see what your website has to offer and end up might not um, converting into subscribers. And then displaying more ads on the website is also not one of the best strategy because um, it kind of affects how your user is interacting with your website. So imagine if they are reading your content and then every scroll they see an ad, um, it's not super, uh, not a super smooth user journey um, or user flow or user experience in this case. Okay. All right, so I hope everyone is clear on the explanation for the quizzes. So now we'll move on to the live demo. So please let me share my screen. All right, can everybody see my screen? All good? All right, so now we'll be moving on to the live demo part of the webinar. So this is where I'll go through how you can go about creating the um, exploration tab, uh, explore the, the different kind of reports in your exploration tab. So like I think Kuga has mentioned to you the different components, but based on what I understand, it might not be um, super, it, it, it will help with the live demo to kind of guide you through how you can go about using the um, exploration report. So if you haven't already created a report, you'll be uh, you'll be navigated to this page, right? When you hit on the exploration tab. So in order to create a free form report, you can either click on the blank um, report over here, or you can click on the free form. So in my case, I've already, for, for me, I've already created a free form one. So I'll click into that. So there are different uh, sections to this report. So first is like the date frame over here. So for in my case, I selected the last 90 days. You can either um, customize it by selecting the date, the date range that you want, or you can select those um, date range that has been proposed um, in the uh, se se selection over here. So if you want to compare the different date range uh, periods, you can just click onto the or uh, enable the compare button and it will uh, and click apply and it will um, automatically do the comparison for you. Okay, so um, for this case, what I have done or what I have created is a content free form um, report that shows you the two different events, article read and article completed. So now you're going to ask me, how can I go about um, creating this content title, right? So if you have your GA4 open and you are on the same page as me, you'll be able to see that uh, it's either you don't have any dimensions in the dimension section or you have a uh, selected few, but it's not the one that you want to uh, show in your or showcase in your report. So how can you go about um, adding more dimensions, right? So under this dimension section, you can click onto the plus button. And in this case, we want to add the content title, right? So in the search bar, you can click or you can enter the word content and then select content title. Once you have done that, you can click on to confirm and it will uh, appear over here. So how you can you go about adding it into your report tab, right? So it's either you can drag and drop it into the rows or columns, or you can select or click onto the button, drag, uh, 
the plus button that has uh, drop or select dimensions and then you the list of dimensions that you have added will appear and then you can just select it from there so after that uh, you can add um, the dimension event name as well with the same steps and add it into your um, columns so now the next step that you have to do is the metric part of your report will also be either empty or only have the metric active users if i'm not wrong and then how you can go about adding the event uh, the metric event count is also the same way you click onto the plus button go to the search tab and add event count uh the word event and then you can search uh, scroll down and see um the metric event count once you have selected it press confirm and it will appear under the metric uh, section in the first column so after it has been um, added, what you can do is the same method. You can either drag and drop it or uh, click onto it. And then all the uh, metrics that you have added into this report will be, uh, will be there will be a selection of it. And then you can just select whatever metric that you want to add into your report over here. So you can see, right, um, based on the selection, we should have a ton of uh, different events that are being collected on this sheet in this GA4 property. However, because we want to limit to um, the, this two event name, which is article read and article completed, we will need to add something called the report filter. So how can we go about doing that is that we would need to um, create or rather you, have, you can either click onto it and then add whatever dimensions that you want to use as filter. So in our case, we will add select the dimension event name and then the conditions we were set to contain the word article so once you have defined it click about uh, click apply and you'll be able to create this report All right then the next report that i will be sharing is the funnel exploration report so uh similarly you will be you can add the different dimensions and different metrics in the same way um, if you if you want to um, add more dimensions, go ahead to uh, click onto the plus button and add whatever dimensions that you will need to use for this report. So final exploration, the the funnel that I have built is more for the users who are coming to your website for the first time. So I'm gonna click onto the steps and go through with you how I go about defining it. So in our case, um. If you don't already know, so if you, the users were to come to your website for the first time, the first visit or first open event will fire by by default. So this is not this you don't have to do any configuration and um this will automatically fire. Then the next event that will fire will be session start. This event will is also something that is fired or collected by default. So how or when this session start event files is when there's a new session that starts so it's an indicator and or an event that uh, signifies the start of a session so the next step would be the page view or screen view depending whether it's an app or web so this is an event so this um is when your users land on um, the different pages on your website or your app uh depending on uh whether it's the home page or whatever it's all going to be a page view so in our case, in this GA4, how we have defined the article read event is that the article read um, event will fire when the user when it when the user lands on the on an article page. Meaning to say, if it's a non-article page, it's just a normal page view event. But when it's an article page, it will be the article read event. Last but not least, it will be the article completed event. So this is when uh, the user scrolls down all the way to the end of the article. So it signifies that the users have come uh, have read through the whole article. So uh, then that's where the article completed event will fire. So after you have uh, defined your different steps that for your funnel, you can click apply, and then this is how the chat will look. So you can see that there is quite a high number of people who are visiting for the first time, and then the session start, and then the normal page view, right? So 
that's where you can see where the drop is. So from the normal page view where users are on non-article pages to going into your actual article. So there's a, uh, there's a huge drop or rather abandonment. And then from the number of people who are reaching to your article pages to people who are who have actually completed or read through your article, uh, there's also a huge drop. So this is how you can go about using the final exploration report. So last but not least, it will be the segment overlap report. So this is slightly different because you're using the segments instead of um, the dimensions and the uh, metric. Um, mainly for this um, report. So how I define, or rather in this report, how do we define the engaged users is when the users have more than five uh, page view event count. So you can see uh, what you have to do is just select the event over here. And then uh, the conditions that we set is the event for the event count to have more than five. And then um, in the different segments that we are using for this example is where we indicate that the users have finished reading the article under the content group articles. So um, this is how we, we, we just want to understand whether or not your, my users, my engaged users are um, reading multiple components of my website, right? So this is how we define it. So the content group articles. And likewise, the last uh, the last segment that we are using is the article completed with content group containing reports. So yeah, that's how you can see. And then you can tell that with this report, you'll be able to see, hey, actually, my um, the users that are coming to my website are not going to the different content group that I have set up. Yeah, so this is how you can see whether or not your users are interacting with the different content grouping of your website. All right, so now we're done with the demo. Um, then we will proceed with the Q&A. So yeah, feel free to, uh, if you have any questions, um, do drop them in the chat box. Uh, if you can see that there is also a fit webinar feedback QR code. So yes, it will definitely appreciate if you can scan the QR code, uh, like, you know, take the time to fill up the survey form to let us understand how we can go about um, improving the webinars, or maybe even including more um, questions that you think we should address in the future webinars. All right, so um, if there are no questions, I'll move on to the next slide. Yeah, so a summary of what we have gone through today is that we have gone through the, the three different types of GA4 reports that are available, right? So um, first we have the standard built-in reports, the customized reports that you can um add into your built-in reports. And last but not least, the exploration reports along with the different techniques that have or that we we have uh that you have in the exploration report. So yes, we understand that there is a whole lot of content that we have shared today. And um the next webinar is actually next Wednesday. Uh, it's also gonna be about reporting where we will deep dive into the specific reports that you can go about building and the kind of insights that you can get um, based on the reports that we are, are sharing. So basically, if you have the custom events that we will be sharing next week and you can recreate the report, you'll be able to gather those insights as well. All right, so... Um, in light of time, we are we actually overran by one minute. So, um, if there's no questions, um, we'll, oh yes. All right. So we have a question. So, can you explain the difference between active users, total users versus users? Okay. So, uh, I believe it's not really active users, total users, and users. I think the four that is available in GA four are active users total users, new users, and returning users. So what's the difference, right? So total, unit, uh, total users are the total number of unique users that are coming to your website. 
new users, uh, users like what I shared earlier, who came to your website for the first time and the first open or first visit event are uh, triggered. So that's how they indicate or rather GA4 identifies that they are new users. And then returning users are just users who, you know, are coming back and then the first visit or first open event that doesn't fire. Last but not least, what active users are. Uh, so active users are users who are engaged on your website. So for example, if they are, uh, I think I mentioned this previously as well, whether they are uh, have more than two page view uh, on your site for more than 10 seconds or have triggered a key event. So this is what um, active users are. So also what uh, are the diff what is the difference between casual readers versus loyal readers versus and new users versus returning users or are they the same thing? So these are different things, but good question. So we actually will be defining of providing you with the definition of what casual readers and loyal readers are um, in the next webinar. But casual readers and loyal readers are it depends on it is more of the audiences that you are building whereas new users and returning users are or whatever the data that is being collected in your in your um g4 property so new users and returning users they are mat matrix matrix that you can use to build in your report whereas for casual readers and loyal readers they build on the metrics that you are collecting in your report. So it depends on how you are defining it. So in the next webinar, we will share with you how you can go about defining it, but ultimately it's your choice. I mean, based on your data, you can make the right decision to how and how you can go about um, defining those audiences. So uh, can you also explain the definition of users? So I believe I explained that earlier. Is it determine according to time frame so no so it is the same thing as long as your there is the first open or first visit event that fires then that will be, in, be an indicator of a first or rather a new user how to get the percentage of social media referrals by session average in ga4 um are you referring to the total number of users that came in by social media referrals? Because uh, like if you're tracking, for example, if you're using a uh, customized uh, like UTM, right? So it has to be like the source specifically saying social and then the medium will be uh, uh, referral, for example, that then it, in, it in, indicates there is a referral traffic from a social media platform. But usually the case is that uh, it's not, the, the, the usually we don't classify social media as like a referral page. It, it's usually either organic or paid media. So maybe uh, you can write in to us and drop us a, a question in the, the link so that we can better understand what you're trying to um, bring out, yeah. All right, uh, I think we overran by five minutes. So uh, thank you for joining the call today. Um, really appreciate the high participant rate today. Um, we, please look forward to the next webinar where we go through all the different kinds of reports and that you can recreate using your GA4 report as well as uh, Lucas Studio. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys.